Okay, um, hopefully a shortest video on validation practice. Really, really important for um, just if you're starting out learning programming or answering exam questions, um, particularly when you have to input, input some data, that will usually get you some marks. But to get some of the higher marks, then you're probably expected to validate that input. So there's going to be some useful examples of validation, and they're going to be written in pseudocode. So you might write your pseudocode slightly differently, but that's fine as long as you're consistent and it makes sense. Um, we're going to focus on presence length and range checks because they're going to be the most common. Um, they're great to start off with and particularly they're the ones that you most likely be asked for in an exam situation. And what I might suggest is you pause the video at the start of each question, try and solve it, then play the video through to see how you've done or just play it through and make some notes. Okay, question one. Write an algorithm in pseudocode which will ask the user to enter their full name validate the input. So we can't really validate a full name because you know there's too many to, to, to validate but what we can do is check just check that the user has typed something in. We call this a presence check. So let's go and ask ahead and ask them to enter their full name first. We'll put a message on the screen so they know what they're doing. We'll store that using the uh, variable full name and I'm gonna go, go ahead and declare it. So um, for the Cambridge specification, GCSE, IGCSE, which is um, the one that we're doing, we have to declare. That's one of the things I like to do. If you're using a different specification, then you might not need to do that, but it's good practice. Okay, so now we need to validate that input. So sometimes it's helpful to write out the sort of validation in words. So we need, so whilst the uh, full name is, hasn't been typed, we have to ask them to type it again. So we could write that up like this. Well, the full name is equal to quote, quote, or no characters. They have to input the full name again. Um, so we can take that statement now and write it as a while loop. While the full name, well, full name is equal to quote, quote, or nothing, do. What do we want them to do? Well, we want them to enter the, or input the full name again. And we need to put an error message as well. So there's usually actually marks in the exam for actually having an error message. So you must enter a full name. Um, and then we need to end or finish our loop structure with the N1. And we call this a presence check. Right, so question two is another example of a presence check. So maybe pause the, if you've seen the first one, try pausing the video, have a go, and then play it through, see how you get on. Right, so write an algorithm in pseudocode which will ask the user to enter their favorite fruit. So let's ask them to enter their favorite fruit, store that using the variable name fruit, and declare it. So the rule is going to be the same as last time. So while the while the um, favorite fruit is has not been entered, or it's equal to nothing, or quote quote, then they have to enter it again. So while favorite fruit is equal to nothing, they have to input the favorite fruit again. So let's write that as a while statement. While fruit is equal to quote quote do, what do we want them to do? Well, we want them to input the fruit again, but we also put an error message there. And let's end that loop structure. End while. Okay, and that's a presence check. Okay, moving on. We have a different type of validation now. We write an algorithm in pseudocode which will ask the user to enter an account number which is 12 characters long. Validate the input. So this time we're actually checking that it is has to be 12 characters long. Not less, not more, exactly 12. So let's ask them to enter the account number first. We'll store that using the variable ACK number and we'll declare that as a string. So we need a rule again, so the rule will be this sum. So while the account number is not equal to 12 characters, they have to enter, keep entering it or they have to enter it again. So while the length of the account number is not equal to 12, the user will have to input the account number again. So once we've established that, we can just write that as a while loop. So while the length of the account number is not equal to 12. So um, the pseudocode that we use is uses the pointy brackets to uh, tell us when something is not equal to, so back-to-back -back pointy brackets or back-to-back -back chevrons that we read that as not equal to. In Python you might put exclamation mark equals or you might use something else, but that's fine as long as you're consistent and you know what it means, that's great. Um, so while length of the count number is not equal to 12, do. What do we want them to do? Well, we want them to enter it again. So input account number again and we've got a suitable error message. And then all we need to do is finish our loop structure. Okay, question uh, and that's a length check, that's the type of validation method that we're using here. So question four is another length check. Um, maybe pause the video, have a go at answering it, and then play it through. So let's have a look. Write an algorithm in pseudocode which will ask the user to enter a username which is eight characters long. Validate the input. 
So let's ask them to enter the username and let's declare it. And let's have a think of the rule. So again, this time it's a specifically has to be eight characters long. So we want to say something like, well, the uh, username is not equal to eight characters. They have to enter it again. So while the length of the username is not equal to eight, the user will have to input the username again. So let's write that up in pseudocode as a while loop. While length of the username is not equal to eight, do what do we want them to do? Well, we want them to input the username again, and we output a suitable error message, and then we can end the while loop. So we're using a very similar loop structure each time to do the validation. So all we need to do is establish the a rule for the while loop, and then we're away. And again, this is a length check. Okay, so uh, the next type of validation we're going to look at is the uh, range check and we're going to do a few more of these this is very common in examination so write an algorithm in pseudocode which allows you to turn to a number between 1 and 10 inclusive validate the input so what are we going to accept we're going to accept so inclusive means we accept 1 and 10 and the numbers in between so we need 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 that's what we're validating here so let's ask them to enter the number between 1 and 10 we'll input that and we will declare that this time as an integer because we're asking them to enter numbers. So our rule we're looking for, uh, while the number is less than 1 or the number is greater than 10, they have to enter it again. So something like that. So while the number is less than 1 or the number is greater than 10, the user will have to input the number again. So we can write that up as a while loop. So whilst the number variable is less than 1 or the number of variables greater than 10, do. Okay, so that will, uh, anything less than 1 or anything greater than 10, will trigger them to jump into this while loop. We will put an error message on the screen, and we'll ask them to input it again. And then we'll end the while loop. So this one, again, is a range check. So let's have a, another practice of another one of these. So question 6. Why is an algorithm in pseudocode which asks you to enter a room length being 1.5 metres and 10 metres inclusive? Check that each measurement is valid, output an error message, and we'll require the measurement to be re-entered until it is valid. So I've taken actually I've actually taken this from an exam question. So first thing we'll do is we'll ask them to enter the room length and we'll give them some details of what they have to do and we'll input that. We'll declare this as a real number because uh, the room lengths can be uh, with decimal point here, so um, we need to uh, allow for that. So we've got that there. Right, so our validation rule is, well, while the room length is less than 1.5, or the room length is greater than 10, it's going to be wrong, because we just want numbers between those two, and it does say inclusive, so 1.5 is accepted and 10 is accepted. So while the room length is less than 1.5, or the room length is greater than 10, the user will have to input the number again, or the room length again. So we can take that, write it as a while loop, while the room length is less than 1.5, or the room length is greater than 10, do. What do we want them to do? Well, we want them to input the room length again, and we will output an error message, invalid length, freeze re-enter, and tell them what they have to do. And that will cover it, apart from adding our end wall to complete our loop structure. And that's another example of a range check. Okay, let's have another look at another range check here. Write an algorithm in pseudocode, which asks you to enter a number less than 10. Validate the input. So for this one, um, let's go ahead and ask them to enter the number less than 10, input the number, and we'll declare that as an integer. So we don't actually have a bottom range, uh, a bottom uh, number to our uh, range here, but it's still a range, so it's it's a, just a number less than 10. So uh, we're looking for a rule, so while the number is... Um, now, we does not say less than 10 inclusive, so actually 10 shouldn't be accepted. So we're... So 9 will be the first number that we've accepted. Ask the user to enter a number less than 10. So the number has to be less than 10. 10 won't be accepted this time, okay? Because it doesn't say uh, inclusive, for example. So uh, we can say something like, well, the number is greater than 9. That means it's wrong. The user will have to input the number again. So while well, number is greater than 9, we just write that. That tab is a simple while loop. Input number. And we have to give them an error message so they know what to do and we can end the while loop. Um, so that should cover that one. Hopefully that one has helped you. Um, just as some of you might have been thinking, perhaps, um, just noting here with the, this is just a, the same thing, but you could say, well, the number is greater than or equal to 10. 
So what we're saying is um, 10 isn't accepted. If it's equal to 10, it's wrong. If it's greater than 10, it's wrong. That That's exactly the same as saying, well, the number is greater than 9. Okay, so it's a different way of doing it, but perfectly acceptable. And that one's a range check. Okay, uh, range checks. Again, write an algorithm in pseudocode which asks the user to select which type of wood they want for their floor. They must type 1 for laminate, 2 for pine, 3 for oak. Check that the input 1, 2 or 3 and output suitable error message and require the number re-entered until it's valid. So this one I've taken again off another exam question. So we'll go ahead and output what they have to do. So they've got some instructions and we'll input that as a variable and we'll set that up as an integer. So we need to think of a rule. So um, we're looking for a number between 1 and 3 inclusive because 1 is accepted, 2 is accepted and 3 is accepted. So we're using integers. So while the word choice is less than 1, or the word choice is greater than 3, they'll have to input it again, because we want to accept 1, 2, or 3, very similar to what we were doing not so long ago. So while word choice is less than 1, or word choice is greater than 3, do. Great, what do we want to do? We want them to enter it again. Give them an error message, tell them what they have to do, and input the variable again. That says room length, that should obviously say word choice. I'll correct that after. OK, and we'll end the while loop. OK, so that's one way of doing this. Um, there's another way of doing this as well. So we'll ask, we'll ask him to input the data. But this time, we're going to declare that as a string. So because we declared it as a string, we can't use a range check on it. But what we can do is we can actually we can actually check that they have, have they entered a 1, a 2, or a 3. So if we use strings, well, the word choice is not equal to 1, or the word choice is not equal to 2, all the word choice is not equal to three, the user will have to input the word choice again. Okay, so whilst it's not equal to any of those, they're gonna to have to enter that again. And we can write that up in pseudocode, okay? And output an error message, ask them to input again, and then we can end that while loop. Okay, so there's two methods there that you could use depending on what data you're expecting. Whether it's an integer, we can do a range, um, if they do it, if they input a string, then we can actually uh, choose from one, two, or three and just accept. Make make them re-enter it while it's not one of those. Okay, right. Let's move on to the next one. That's that's uh, a range check. Okay, question nine. Write an algorithm in pseudocode which asks users to enter temperature readings, which are in Celsius, to one decimal place. Temperatures can only be from minus 20 to 50 degrees inclusive. So again, I've taken this from an exam question. So it's similar to what we've been doing. We'll output a message, what they have to do, input the uh, value, declare it as a real number because we have decimal points in here. And then we'll figure out our rule. So um, whilst the temperature entered is less than minus 20, or greater than 50, it's wrong, so they have to re-enter it. So our temperature is less than minus 20, or the temperature is greater than 50, the user will have to input the temperature again. So let's write that up as a while loop. So while temperature is less than 20, or the temperature is greater than 50, do what they have to do. Well, they're going to input the temperature again, give them an error message, and we can end our while loop. Um, we can add some uh, comments as well. Comments are quite useful to help you uh, sort of explain what you're doing. But I'm adding this here is because it says in the question, um, where's it saying in the question? Um, it doesn't say, ah, yes it does, to one decimal place. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take, so once it's passed the validation, the number might actually have um, more or less than the required number of decimal places. So I'm just going to say um, temperature assign, I and mean, I'm just rounding it to one decimal place. Okay, so um, that's not asked for here specifically, but it does say the readings to one decimal place. So we validated it, and I'm just making sure it's one decimal place. And that again is a range check. Okay, so question ten. So again, we've got with this one, we've got. Oops, let me just move that up to there. With this one, we've got ask the user terms number to choose their option from the menu below. So we've got one, display the balance, two, withdraw money, three, deposit money, four, exit. So um, I'm doing the outputs on separate lines here. So um, usually uh, you, there's, there's lots of different ways you can do this. But if you uh, just assume every time you output, you, you get the um, output on a new line. 
I'm inputting the choice and this time we're going to set that up as an integer. So we've got a range here. So our rule is going to be while well, the choice is less than one or the choice is greater than four, they can have to input it again. So we can write that up as a while loop. So while choice is less than one or choice is greater than four, do. What do they have to do? They have to uh, input the choice again, give them an error message, and we can end that while loop. So let's have a look. We got just two more of these to work through. Okay. Okay, and that one is a range check. Okay, question 11. Write an algorithm in pseudocode which will check if the user wishes to withdraw money, uh, that the value entered must be positive. Write pseudocode that will value this. So value, validate this. So we're checking that we have a positive value. So what is a positive value? A positive value is a value greater than zero. So let's ask them to enter their withdrawal amount first. And uh, we'll declare that as an integer. Um, because we're drawing in whole, so obviously if you write currency, you you could write whatever the currency is, um, for example, pounds or pence. But we're actually we're, we're actually specifying an amount to withdraw, so that would be in, generally in whole pounds. So I'm going to set that as an integer. But if you set it as real, and you could justify why, then that's not a problem. Um, our rule will be: while well, the withdrawal amount is less than zero, they're going to have to input that again. So um, while well, the withdrawal amount is less than zero, input the withdrawal amount again. So while well, the withdrawal amount is less than or equal to zero, obviously you can't withdraw with zero pounds. So that's why the equals there. If you said while well, it's less than one, that would also be fine. So while well, it's less than one, less than one is zero. Okay, so um, that that's suitable for there. Eight put invalid amount, please you enter an amount greater than zero. Input withdrawal amount. Now with this one, I've obviously forgotten to put the do on here. So with the uh, while loop, sometimes you have while do as long as you're consistent it doesn't really matter and then we can end our while loop there okay so that one again is a range check right this is the last one write an algorithm in pseudocode which will if the user wishes to deposit money make sure the value must be positive write pseudocode that will validate this okay so please choose the amount to deposit input deposit amount and we'll set that again as an integer. So again, this time the amount that they're depositing has to be uh, greater than zero. So while the deposit amount is less than use, less than or equal to zero, the user should input the deposit amount again. So again, while the deposit amount is less than or equal to zero, what they have to do, I put an error message, they have to input that again, end the while loop, and that's a range check. Okay, so uh, thank you for um, watching this one, and hopefully it's been helpful. And I'll see you in the next video.